Historia Montana, man. Historia Montana. You want the money, you want the power. You want the power, then you get the women. Then you get the women, then you get the money. Like. <laughs> What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Tunji's Podcast. I am your host, Tunji Taylor Lewis. Uh, once again, thank you to all of you who tune in to watch the podcast every day or every other day or however often you watch it. Uh, it really means the world to me. Um, it's just been. Uh, it's just been crazy it's just crazy to think that people are actually out there who would actually sit down and watch me or listen to me just talk for 10 minutes uh, it's really really cool um, yeah just kind of like is a great indicator of um, you know how much of a relationship I have with my audience online and uh, it's really cool you know I definitely want to build this thing towards doing you know bigger and better things and you know the imaginations and this, the stuff I, I have inside of my head and so I'm really grateful that you guys are a part of that in these early stages thank you so much um, as you guys can see I'm having a great shirt day great shirt day alert never mind the the stain of sauce you guys see that right there never mind that I was eating tacos earlier today so I had a slightly less um, great shirt day but uh, for those of you who are listening to this I'm wearing uh, shirt that bears the image of Tony Montana. Tony Montana from the classic film, um, from the classic film Scarface. Um, and uh, this character was obviously done by the great Al Pacino. It's Tony Montana, man. It's Tony Montana. You want the money, you want the power. You want the power, then you get the women. Then you get the women, then you get the money. Like, one of the great cinematic characters of all time. Had to grab it when I saw it in H&M. This is not an ad, by the way. I don't get ad dollars from anybody, at least not at this stage. Um, this is just genuinely, I'm just genuinely a fan of this sh shirt and this movie and the store that I got it at H&M. I'm pretty sure the protest is over, right guys? We're not, we're not boycotting H&M anymore. We good? Hopefully we good, because even if we're not good, I don't regret this purchase. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, man, Tony Montana, Tony Montana. Tony Montana is like a great villain in a movie. He's a villain that you root for when you watch him. And uh, as I was thinking about what I wanted to talk about the podcast today, I thought about the fact that I was having a great shirt day, the fact that I had Tony Montana, and it made me think of the fact that my favorite characters in movies, or my favorite movie characters tend to be villains. They tend to be those villains that are done very well by great actors and they're the, they're the type of villains that the the movie sets them up where like you actually root for them and that's actually a goal of mine to achieve as an actor is to play a character where i'm a villain but the audience doesn't root against me they actually root for me like they actually want me to succeed you know in committing the crime and not get caught by the police and the government and all that stuff right so i decided that this would be a good time to go down my list of my my top five uh favorite movie villains because these are all and all of these characters that i've said these are all characters that i've studied I've tried to dissect, I've tried to pull like pointers from them. Um, I'm pretty sure all of them, I've done uh, lip sync videos of all of them, whether it was like my really early days, like in 2018, or it was like further along. So these are all characters that I love and like I've obsessed over. So number five on the list is Tony Montana. Say hello to my little friend. You need people like me so you can point your fucking fingers. And say that's the bad guy. Um, just the character, man, just the voice, just the intensity of the guy. Say hello to my little friend! That, I mean, like, just like so many classic lines coming out of the mouth of Tony Montana from Cuba. <laughs> no, 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 what did he say in the movie? I am Antonio Montana from Cuba. And I want my fucking job out right, right now. Just classic, man. Um, I love the character, but the reason why he's a little bit lower on my list as opposed to higher is that I love villains who are really uh, comfortable in their villainy, right? Like, they've sort of set up a world where they're the good guy and, um, you know, the government and the police and the, and the, and the, and the police officers who are against them, those are, those are the bad guys. Like, they're very comfortable in what they're doing. Like, they're very justified in the crimes that they're committing. Um, as much as I love the Tony Montana character, he is 
you know, as he, you know, comes to prominence and he gets all this money from, you know, his his cocaine dealing, you can tell that he's very insecure, right? And like he's still like yelling at people. Um, he becomes like, you know, high on his own supply. You know, he's shooting erratically. He becomes delusional, right? And um, as we get higher and higher on the list, like we're gonna see like characters of mine that I love. They're not delusional about who they are. Uh, more so as they're just like completely confident and justified in the life that they're leading, right? So, I mean, like, you know, you you, you just see it like it like everybody like you should YouTube right now last final scene of of um, of Scarface um, And like you just see that like Tony is just like completely like lost his mind. He's high. He's erratic. He's shooting everybody He's like, you know, he's he's crazy until like his until like his until like his final and he got killed right so he didn't end up actually winning so love the character but not necessarily the best villain in my book but still love him quite a bit because i am personal i'm not gonna lie so <laughs> um number four on my list is buddy love from the nutty professor oh that's no way to talk what'll it be now when I say Nutty Professor, most of you guys might be thinking of the, the movie with Eddie Murphy and Jada Pickett Smith where Eddie Murphy was the, was the fat guy and, uh, and Buddy Love was like the, the skinnier version of, of, of the fat guy and like you know he's Buddy Love and, and Professor Clump are nobody love, nobody love, I gotta come out, all that stuff right? But I'm not talking about that movie, I'm talking about the movie from the 60s with the great Jerry Lewis. That movie but that was the movie that Eddie Murphy based uh, his uh, more modern version of and that movie was uh, was a movie that was kind of uh, based on a Jekyll and Hyde where you had like this really nerdy professor who talked a little bit like this and let me get my glasses here he his his uh, his uh, his glasses were uh, were on his nose like this and, and this is how he would talk and uh, so that was the professor character and so that that professor created like a potion that he drank and he became like just like a very very macho man you know what i mean um i'll leave i'll probably like share a clip at some point if i haven't already but like he was just like this really like macho dude like you know like was very rude to people but he was very confident it was like the complete opposite of the very you know diminutive and sensitive and awkward um professor i love that character of buddy love um, probably because like he's just uh, just funny you know what I mean like uh, in the clip that I show you you're gonna see scenes where he's completely condescending to people he's a complete asshole but for whatever reason you're just very very uh, drawn to him like like it, it's it's so strange like I've, I've looked at this character over and over and over again and for and I can't put my finger on why I love that character so much but you just do and there's just like something about him you're just drawn to him even though he's like completely condescending to everybody and he's not a good guy so that was number four uh, number three is Frank Lucas American gangster done by the great Denzel Washington um, either you're somebody or you're nobody I'll be right back um, that was this, this is the only black gangster on my list and uh, I've done a couple lip sync videos of him where uh, he goes the uh, uh, what, what do you say he goes uh, uh, um, I got a lot of connections I, I would guarantee you peace of mind that's what you told me Dominic I can guarantee you peace of mind I don't feel so peaceful huh? they tried to kill my wife like it was classic Denzel intensity in those moments but for the most part he was very very cool Denzel okay okay all right all right okay all right all right so what you want to do this is what you want to do that's what you want to do all right I'm with you. that that Denzel and like it's really cool to see that coolness of Denzel and like this villainous character who's doing wrong and um I like him because like he kind of justified his wrongdoing because of the, the systematic racism and he wanted to sort of you know thumb his nose at the system that 
you know, like white people used to oppress black people by, you know, being, you know, the richest gangster, you know, in the world. Um, he didn't end up winning ultimately, but he also didn't end up like losing. Like he just went to jail for a long time. But uh, that's probably why he's lower on the list is because like at the end of the day, he got caught and he went to jail. So, um, um, number two on the list is Don Corleone from The Godfather. I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. Um, number two on the list is Don Corleone from The Godfather. I know The Godfather is something that all actors say they love. Like it's a really, it's a really a cliche thing to say, but like that character, Don Corleone, you want to talk about? He's probably like the the most uh, comfortable in his villainy out of all of these characters. Just like and 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 the voice and the characterization of it, like. I can't tell you how many times I've watched that scene, like, um, man, man, uh, done by the great Marlon Brando, just, uh, upon itself, upon itself. What have I ever done to make you treat me so disrespectful? If you come to me in friendship, then the scum that ruined your daughter would be suffering this very day. And if by chance an honest man by myself should make enemies, then you would become my enemy. And then they will fear you. It's just like, come on, man. Like, he's saying so many things in that line, but like, but he's also saying so little and he's doing it very, like more subtly than I was doing. Like I was a little bit too sporadic with it and he was just completely slow and comfortable with it. And oh my goodness, just one of the great um, cinematic characters of all time, villain or non-villain, just like one of the great characters of all time and one of the greatest movies of all time. Number one, my number one villain, my number one movie villain was Calvin Candy, done by Leonardo DiCaprio in Django Unchained. Hey! Lay your palm flat on that tabletop! Now it should be stated, Django Unchained is my favorite movie. Um, Quentin Tarantino is a genius. I'm gonna go see Once Upon a Time in Hollywood on Tuesday. That one also has Leonardo DiCaprio. Very excited to see that one, but you would think that my favorite character in Django Unchained would be the, the slave that became a hero and not the horrible slave owner, but man, I'll be damned. And I'm contradicting myself a little bit here because the Calvin Candy character ended up getting killed. He ended up, you know, quote unquote losing, but, but man, Leonardo DiCaprio's depiction of Calvin Candy, that speech where he brought out the skull and he was sawing it and like telling him how like, and, and telling Jimmy Fox's character how like, you know, white people are superior to black people and just like, I think I'm just drawn by his assuredness and the justification that being the, a slave owner who rules over black people is the right way to go about life and it's just nature and and how angry and pissed off he was that somebody came into his territory to try to challenge that philosophy he did such an amazing job man like like i think i just like respect the fact that you know that mentality is so different from how leonardo DiCaprio. DiCaprio's mentality is about life like as a you know as a modern man there's no way you think about black people in that way but to sort of take on that level of hatred and evil and to encompass it in a way that the character comes out being like yeah like this is the way things go and like you know like this is just how it is like what's the problem he's completely convinced that this is an okay thing to do about life like I just like I just tip my hat off to that man for that performance so yeah so those are my th five all-time favorite movie villains thank y'all so much for watching and listening once again peace out